So about 25 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, I kind of had this question. I said, well, wait a minute. How come there's so many different diets out there? How come there's so many different exercise programs? Why are there so many different counseling books and self-help books? I mean, my God, the industry is a multi-billion dollar industry, isn't it? Isn't it? Why are there so many different supplements and all this kind of crap? And I said, well, quite clearly, here's why. Because they're asking the wrong question. They're asking how to make a sick person a little less sick. They're not asking the right question, which is this. What is the genetic requirement for that species? If we just step back for a second, just take, just go, just a minute. Is that a logical question? If we ask the question, what nutritional patterns, what nutrients are required for the human species? Is that a good question? How come nobody's asked it? I don't know. Do you think when they developed the four food groups that they said, hmm, let's do research to figure out what, what nutrients are required to express our potential? Is that the research they did? Who funded the research for the four food groups and the whole thing? Was, did you check? Was it maybe dairy and grain lobby? Isn't that interesting? What, what's happened to us since we started eating grains? Do you know? Not only has our stature shrunk, but what else? Our brain size is literally smaller. What else? More tooth decay, more bone loss, more osteoporosis, more mental illness, more obesity, more everything. Very well documented. Why? Because humans, where did humans start again? I told you I'd get around to this. I do, it all ties together eventually at the end around 1130. Um, <laughs> so remember when we walked out of that jungle and went onto the plains? What did we do? We ate a lot of meat, didn't we? By the way, were we chasing around wildebeest sucking on their teeth to get dairy? Did we take our kids and go, my God, I can't have a healthy baby. It has to have some kind of bovine milk. I'm going to attach my baby to this wildebeest as it runs around so that my baby will be healthy. Is that what we did? In fact, in the history of the human species, we never ever consumed the, 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 the milk of another mammal. What is breast milk? It's a hormone delivery system set up specifically for what? The babies of, of, the, the, of that mammal. Yes or yes? What other mammal on earth drinks milk from another mammal? How come you don't drink cat's milk like Fokker? <laughs> I mean, why don't you? And yet, I have people come into my, into my practice all the time, when I used to practice, you know, and they'd say, oh, my baby, oh, oh I, I gotta get, you know, the pediatrician say, my, my baby's gotta drink more milk. And I was like, really, why? Well, it's not on the, it's a, it's a little bit low birth weight on the chart. I go, you mean the obese baby Gerber formula fed, high fructose corn syrup stuffed down their throat babies? And they're like, oh. I said, bring me the formula and read it to me. They'd bring it in the first ingredient, high fructose corn syrup, the second ingredient, what? Dairy. I go, is your, is your baby gaining weight? Because your baby looks pretty healthy to me. Yeah. Well, then why do you have to feed it milk? How can all our ancestors survive without milk or grains? And how is it possible that part of the food groups are based on what? Dairy and grains. Where did that come from? I know because you can't get healthy bones without what? Dairy? Interesting, isn't it? You know, there's about a billion Muslims in the world or whatever that wouldn't touch a cow and they have way less osteoporosis than people in Wisconsin. It's the dairy state. <laughs> How many studies are out there that actually show that drink and consuming milk increases bone density or decreases fractures? How many studies are there? How many studies are there to show that taking calcium supplements increases bone density or reduces fractures? Are there any studies that show that, in fact, if you, if you actually look at the summary of all the studies of all the RCTs, what does it tell you? That calcium supplementation increases the rate of hip fracture. Why? Well, if you understood how calcium, what calcium does and, and you know, what it does to, to how you're going to convert vitamin D and everything else, it's a nightmare. Most people are deficient in vitamin D. That's certainly a, a truth. But it's certainly not because you don't have calcium. By the way, if you just drank protein shakes and sat on the couch, would you build big muscles? <laughs> I've tried. You know, it doesn't work. So how could you sit on the couch and build big bones by sucking back calcium and dairy? Does your body build big bones because you've got calcium? or because you put load on them. It's ridiculous, isn't it? And why does your body take, bone, take calcium out of your bones? The same reason it takes protein out of your muscles if you stop exercising, you lazy sod. Because it doesn't need it and your body's incredibly efficient. Because genetically, we're what? We're really good at missing a few meals and, and you know, storing stuff and getting ready and we have to be super efficient because genetically, we're never sure where we're going to get our next meal, right? Environmentally now, what? We're guaranteed to get too many meals. 
We have, we have no issue with it. But honestly, it's a disaster. So when I started looking into this, probably the world's leader in this is a guy named Boyd Eaton. And one of Boyd Eaton's uh, you know, protégés was a guy by the name of Lauren Cordain, who many of you are into the paleo stuff would have, would have heard of Cordain. But long before Cordain, in fact, long before Eaton, uh, you know, the caveman died, Desmond Morris, who talked about the naked ape. People have been, there have been people out there who have said, if we could just look at humans like a biologist, because humans aren't outliers in terms of mammals. The same laws that govern all the other mammalian physiology Govern, govern us. But for religious reasons and all kinds of other reasons, we've never studied humans in biology class. Even when I was doing my graduate work at UVic, I had to study the biology of humans in a different building than the biology of all the other animals. In fact, I took animal physiology, 305, I remember it, 305A and 305B, if I remember. And I went over there and I studied the physiology of a frog in the same class as, an, as a chimp. But if I wanted to study human physiology, I had to go to a different building. Someone told you that you weren't an animal. So we didn't study ourselves like animals. We come up with all these ridiculous, stupid rules about what makes us sick and what we should do to get healthy that don't apply to any other mammal on Earth. So here's the test. If you jump out of a building, by the way, if you dropped a cat or a dog, let's call it a cat. If you dropped a cat out of a building, would it fall? Would gravity act upon that cat? Right. So if you can jump out of a building and not fall up, if you fall down, it means that you are under the same laws of the universe as all the other creatures who live on Earth. Fair enough to say? So what are those laws? That's really the question, isn't it? What are the laws? And the laws are this. The laws are that your genome determines what your diet should be. And that that's no different from any other member of your species. The laws of this universe are, the laws of biology and evolution are this, that your genome your gene code, determine what species you belong to, determines how you should exercise and how much exercise you require to stimulate your genes. Do your genes get expressed differently if you exercise than if you don't? Yes or yes? Of course they do. Would your genes get expressed differently if you ate McDonald's instead of broccoli? If you ate carbohydrate and whole grains instead of wild game meat? Would they? Literally, you would express your genes differently, wouldn't you? Would your genes get expressed differently if you looked in the mirror and said, I'm fat and stupid and I'll never get to do anything in my life, versus if you looked in the mirror and said, I'm totally capable, I'm so grateful for this opportunity for life, I wonder how what I can contribute today. Would your genes be expressed differently? Damn right they would. In fact, I mean, they're, they're looking at, they can actually measure epigenetic expression now, gene expression. So that's my area of interest. And it's a long-winded way of telling you why. So now what I want to share with you tonight is really how to protect yourselves because the world is full of predators and the people who become preyed upon the most are the sick and the, and the, and the people who want to excel at some kind of athletic endeavor. You are the people who are marketed to the most. You are the people who are get most brainwashed because you're looking for an, you're either looking for an edge in terms of your performance or you're looking for a way not to be sick. And I really feel that my purpose on this earth is to protect the people who are vulnerable. And the sad thing is, is that most of us now are vulnerable because we really don't understand how our bodies work. And you know, our ancestors didn't have to understand how their bodies work because they all ate the same things. There wasn't a Big Mac or a Burger King on every corner. They had to exercise in order to survive. If you didn't exercise, you didn't make it. They had to belong to a community or they didn't survive. They had no choices, in other words. But you have an awful lot of choices. And the, the reality is, is that most of the economy of the Western world is based on convincing you through marketing to spend money on things that are going to harm yourself. Or the planet, or both. That virtually most of the things that are marketed in magazines, on the television, I mean, the, the four food groups. My God, have you been to a hospital and see what they feed these people? Hands up if you think you could design a better diet than the expert PhD dietitians at the hospitals are doing. So, I mean, that's a shocker, isn't it? They got 29 people figuring out what pill you should take, and then they give you a pork chop with gravy and jello. It's, it's incredible. 